on this episode of Lapeef Let's Talk. Agree that if it's outside the top 25, then guess what it is? We'll consider that subpar. If you got a top it's 25, not. hey, you're a rapper. You're not in the top 100. Will we call you a subpar rapper? But how out of how do you, do you know the definition of subpar? It's below oh, man, average. All right, I'm done. So yeah, below yeah, average would right, mean I'm, it has to be underneath fifty percent. Right. right. Like words matter. Yeah, subpar is below it, average. If yeah, it's right. in the top one hundred and there's an ten thousand schools, it's not. It's still not subpar. It would have to be F rated to be subpar. So we saying we acknowledge that there are the A plus schools, okay. but for you to say A minus or B or B minus is subpar, that's not what subpar is. Subpar is below F. And the thousands of schools in the middle, they're not all subpar. Obviously, the ones closer to the bottom, but the but just Ivy League, and you're saying stuff under Ivy League, like Northwestern or other schools are subpar just because they're not Ivy League. What? You're saying, well, that's it. I mean, listen, you understand the, one, the one thing that Kay has brought to this show, and I will give her the utmost credit forever, is that this is something that you can research. When he uses example and then he gave the context about finance specifically, this is not something that can be disputed. You can literally go and find the information yourself. What are we talking? What does feelings have I'm to do with the about fact? my experience? Hold on, hold on. But this show. ain't got nothing to we do with your experience. Our experience and this our don't opinions. have anything to do we with your experience. Data, and your experience. Don't I don't care. You, you're not going to over talk me because like, I was just talking. I was making my point. I was very patient. But the point that I'm making is that we don't care about your experience because that was not the example by which we were making our by which he was making his point. He was making his point to illustrate that in the larger scheme of things, what we identify as culture has no relevance on what it is that we're trying to solve when it comes to getting the results that we want, especially for the people that we love. We don't care about how you feel. The only thing that matters is the results. And if you Look at the facts according to how it is that he placed his example and then the context that he gave. It is absolutely 100% true, regardless of what your experience is. So, what difference do it make? What your experience? Listen, I think I, I married a, I the most phenomenal black woman on earth, in my opinion. Does that mean that there's not black women for the streets? That's it don't matter about what my experience is when it comes to the larger point that's being made in the context by which he's using it. Now, if I want to make a different point that's completely separate with, from that, that's a whole nother point, but you can't use it to dispute what it is that he's saying because it's something that you can research and it's a fact. Right, but he just but said, I asked him specifically, on to make other if it's not in the top 10, does it make it subpar? He said no. So he's saying what I'm saying, which is just because it's not in the top 10 does not mean it's a subpar school. And I'm not going to accept you saying that just because it's an HBCU, it's a subpar school. So he's he's helped me made my point, regardless of his context, the point that I'm making. Well, so here's the thing, too, that. because that. we've moved on from finance. And then he started talking about his experience and how he feels. So that's how he we uses experience to make a point about culture. But, well, but what he said was I have a question, Courtney. School, Hold on, let me finish this and then you can ask that. What he said when he was talking about when he was in ROTC teaching in two different schools and the, he talked about them having sex and being pregnant. And then he said HBCUs is a subpar education. He went on from talking about finances, talking about specifically black schools. And so he talked about his experience. I believe what I was saying and what Kayla was saying, well, okay, that's his experience. We're not negating his experience, but that's not our experience being that I'm a graduate of. I was there. I lived on campus for three years. Did you that graduate in my finance experience. though, Courtney? I'm sorry. But you Courtney, did you, degree. the question, okay, but was he wrong? I didn't in what hear you, statement was, even though I, I said, do you have a finance degree? No, I don't. So what are we no, talking no, about? That's not, so does that mean okay, people that's that not what I'm don't have finance okay, degrees? Let me repeat again. Oh, I got to do one at a time so they can right. hear us, y'all. We got the finance. We moved on from that. What he started talking about was his particular experience as far as teaching ROTC at a white school and a black school. And then he said the black school, it was subpar. The only thing that I was saying was that I'm not going to sit here and say HBCUs are subpar. When you say subpar, the definition is below average. HBCUs are not below average schools. And that's all I'm saying. What he said, what he said about black colleges, the orgies, even though you guys didn't encounter that or deal with that, you know, there was other people doing that. Come on. 
We're not no going to be. That, I didn't that, go to a black college. Is that exclusive yeah. to black schools? Saying, hold on, hold on, okay. I'm in Kayla. Kind of negate on. what he said, and his he's right about that part. Like, even though you wasn't yeah. the one doing the orgies, getting pregnant, there were plenty of people in, in HBCUs doing that. So, and there were yeah, like, yeah, and no one what. said like. No one, no one's, I just, I literally just said, no one is negating what he said. What he is saying is he was given his experience. We're just giving ours is another experience because I don't want to be on a platform where he's saying it's HBCUs are subpar and being that I'm a graduate, I will not have that uh, narrative out there. HBCUs are not okay. subpar. Not. That's it. So if you so have, he can have his experience, I can have mine as well. So if you had to go to, if your son or daughter had to go to a school for a finance and it was Harvard or Morehouse, which one would you choose? I will look at this. I will look at the school to see as far as the graduation rate in finance and which is a better, which one is a better school for finance. Well, okay, we, we, we a all know. I mean, we can really look it up simple. right now. And, and, but, yeah, we, and we know that no HBCU but, was in the top 10, 15, yeah. 20, 25 of finance and now that we know yeah. that would you make a decision to send him to harvard yeah, or whatever to school is offering a scholarship we really? will, and he wants to do finance we will go to the one giving him a scholarship for finance no one is saying that we get it the issue that i had was calling hbcu subpar that was it because there are graduates of finance at hbcus that, that work on wall yeah, that, that, that work for merrill lynch that office. work on executive boards for pnc cool, we get like they like it. cool I, I got one thing. If, right. if, if, point, if we just pull it up right now, and there's no HBCU in the top 25 in the field of finance, is my example correct? Sure, for finance. Right. But then you went down no, a rabbit hole and started talking about It's not that. Why y'all won't just say yes and then leave it at that? Yeah. So what you're saying is what I said. Hey, 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 hey. Not if you're going to go down a rabbit hole about parties and pregnancy and and orgies and all this extra stuff. Oh, that's like icing you, on the cake for me, though. Like what I'm just saying. I, I'm saying say before we even deal. get to that part of it, though, if you cannot find a, one of them schools in the top 25 and my son was to go to that school, would that not be a subpar school? No, I just aspect? asked you earlier. If it's not in the top, is it subpar? You said no. You said it. Oh, well, I, did, I wasn't catching what you said then, because I don't know. Because you'd you be confusing me then when you you ask me these questions when I ask you something. So I apologize. But in the aspect of the top 25, so everybody changing. agree that if it's outside the top 25, then guess what it is? Uh. We'll consider that subpar. If you got a top That's 25, not. hey, you're a rapper. You're not in the top 100. Will we I call you a subpar it. rapper? But how out of how do you, do you know the definition of subpar? It's below oh, yeah, average. All right, I'm done. So yes. Below yes. average, but right. it, means um, it has to be underneath fifty percent. Right. Like words matter. Yeah, subpar is below shot. average. If yeah, it's right. in the top one hundred, and an there's ten thousand schools, it's not. It's still not subpar. It would have to be F rated to be subpar. So we saying we acknowledge that there are the A plus schools, okay. but for you to say A minus or B or B minus is subpar, that's not what subpar is. Subpar is below F. And the thousands of schools in the middle, they're not all subpar. Obviously, the ones closer to the bottom, but the but just Ivy League, and you're saying stuff under Ivy League, like Northwestern or other schools are subpar just because they're not Ivy League. What? 